And today we'll be taking an exclusive first look at the all new Drone Assist app. As well as explaining the updates, I will run through the app and give you my thoughts on how the new app performs and take a look at where the app could go in the future. Drone Assist is on the phones and tablets of many UK flyers. It has become an essential part of flying drones for a lot of people. However, the app has never really had many updates and has certainly not seen the level of refresh it has gone through to produce this new version. Originally, the app was created by the talented people over at Altitude Angel on behalf of Nats or National Air Traffic Services. But the app never enjoyed a successful development with funding not being put into things like updates, etc. This led to what was eventually a bit of a creaking app in need of some attention. The original developer, Altitude Angel, recently took control of the app, which meant they could then throw funding, time and resources into developing a new look app. Regular viewers will remember the video we released last year showing the early version of the new app. After recent beta testing with a volunteer group of testers, the app is now ready to be launched to the public. In fact, you'll be able to download the new Drone Assist app in just a few days from this video being published. So let's take a little look at the app itself and talk through how it works and some of the improvements that have been made. I will also give my personal tips on setup to allow you to get the most out of the app to support your drone flights. The app launches very quickly and immediately runs smoothly. The map is very sensitive to touch and updates very quickly with both air and ground information. The UI is very simple and intuitive. At the top of the screen, you have four key buttons. The search key, allowing you to look up specific locations. The map layer button, which gives you quick access to adjust what you see. Well, I'll come back to that in a couple of minutes. The map details button, giving you the option to change the map style. And this is for the first time. From the road version, we're all used to seeing with Drone Assist, the things like satellite, satellite labeled, and even terrain. The fourth button at the top of the screen is something new and exciting for Drone Assist. This gives you some weather information for your location and time, as well as giving you a one hour ahead prediction. So this is useful to check when you're on site and about to fly. The weather section gives you things like wind speed, direction, percentage, cloud cover, temperature, precipitation, as well as other useful information such as pressure and visibility. The ability to hit a button and check an hour ahead is also very useful. With the recent changes to UAV forecast, it might be a future update idea here for your altitude angel to consider an even longer detailed weather section with a longer range forecasting over a few days, but it's great to see weather now being included on the front page of the app. At the top right of the screen, you have the usual center on location switch, which will snap you back to your live position. At the bottom of the app, we have three buttons, my plans, map, and the settings cog with the word you below it. We'll explore these in a couple of minutes. Back to the top of the screen and the map layers button. It is useful to have access to map information and layers quickly from the main screen this time. This allows you to fine tune the app to show the information you want to see. For me, I would recommend turning a few of the options off. That's just me personally, as I say. The first one here, which is upper airspace, can be switched off. You don't need that. The next one, regulated airspace with the drone symbol, certainly needs to stay on as this is the main restrictions that we follow. In fact, the rest of these, in my opinion, should actually stay switched on as they include things like temporary restrictions and also ground hazards. The list of included zones highlighted below can then be further tweaked. Here, I would personally switch off control zones. These are the larger zones surrounding airports, etc., which are outside the aerodrome flight restriction zone and are actually intended for manned aviation. It is basically the zone where the aircraft will follow the ATC of the airport when flying at certain levels, so you don't need to have it switched on. This is one of the most common questions relating to the Drone Assist app, so it's useful to be able to turn this off very quickly from the front screen. You can also turn off prisons. These restrictions are related to an exclusion zone around prisons, preventing helicopter flights, manned helicopter flights, and do not include drones. Now, although I turn this off, please keep in mind that there are all sorts of complications around flying your drone near prisons, including some actual restrictions for certain prisons. So do check locally if you're flying very close to one, but turning this tab off will stop the very large restriction circles showing on the app. 
The remaining button is the drone in a circle at the bottom right corner, which brings up a few options in terms of planning and logging your flight. So all of the explanation so far is how much capability you have within the new Drone Assist app without needing to sign in. So you can get all of the information you need without the requirement to provide any information of your own, essentially. The next parts do need a sign in and by the nature of the sections, things like information about your drone, etc. But if you want these extra services, you probably won't mind handing over things like your email address, setting up a password, that type of thing. So first off, we can look at the settings tab titled you at the bottom right hand side of the screen. This will give you access to a lot of the information that will feed the app. You can change things like unit of measurement and security preferences, so set biometric sign in, etc. Outside of the unit measurement changes, you will need to sign in. I've created a dummy account for this purpose. Once you are signed in and the account is verified via a code to your email, the settings tab will then give you this view with your name as signed in user at the top. The details section has your address, registration details and mobile number, etc. That kind of personal information. The aircraft section allows you to save your aircraft details. This helps in terms of logging your flights on the app, but also if you use the Drone Assist app to gain FRZ flight authorizations through the UTM Ready feature, it helps there too. So setting up a drone is really easy. You first of all give it a little sort of name, I can call this one Mini 2, whatever, etc. And then you enter the manufacturer's details below and describe the aircraft itself and also give it its weight. The most useful time for this information is actually when you use the UTM Ready system as that is then that, that information is passed on to the aerodrome so they can see what type of drone you are flying very easily. The support tab allows you to open a support ticket and the resources tab gives you app information, terms and conditions, privacy stuff, etc. Back on the main screen, if you tap on the drone symbol, you can now access the flight planning elements. Hitting fly now or create a plan allows you to notify other app users and those using the map on dronesafetymap.com of your flight. Personally, I do log a lot of my flights, both recreational and commercial, but it is a personal preference, of course. You can enter your details and confirm the type of drone that you're going to be flying, etc. There are now some cool new drawing tools allowing you to actually design the specific flight plan or flight area, which is more realistic to your flight plan than the traditional circle, um, which of course you can still use. There are benefits to both depending on what you're doing. One of the deeper features of the app brings into force the power of the Altitude Angel UTM service. This is something I used last year to fly my Mini 2 in the Gatwick Airport flight restriction zone. There is a link in the description to that video showing my flight. When you tap on a facility which is using the UTM Ready system, you'll see a little fixed wing green symbol there. Tapping on this icon will take you to the restriction info as usual, but then there will also be a new button allowing you to plan a flight within the FRZ and apply digitally to the airport. Now this is a subject all of its own, so there will be a video coming up on this topic on Geeksvana, which will look at the ways you can gain permission to fly an FRZ should you need to. Put simply, the UTM Ready system will take your details, including the drone being flown, that type of thing, and the pilot, and send them to the aerodrome for permission. They'll then give you a digital permission back. It is a slick and very cool, system and hopefully a lot more larger airports will start to use the system at some point. It is important to remember that there will be still requirements for you to contact ATC before you take off just like any other aircraft would. So as explained we will do a deeper dive on that topic soon. In terms of where improvements are needed for me this still surrounds the information provided to pilots within the restriction pop-ups. There's still some woolly wording here which gives options of it could be illegal to fly here or it could be advised against. This needs to change and the information provided on the app needs to be 100% accurate to the zone described. The team at Altitude Angel are working on this and there should be some updates very soon.
So there we have it. The new Drone Assist app is coming to an app store near you very, very soon. For those of you watching this premiere live, you will now be automatically taken, redirected by the magic of YouTube across to a special live show where I will be joined live in the studio by some of the Altitude Angel team to discuss the new app and the future of drones and lower airspace activity in the UK. It's going to be a really interesting show so to join do join us if you're watching this on the replay then you'll be able to access that via a link in the description below sean out